Kingdom blessings and greetings. I'm King David, the vessel of Yielding Music Group, inviting you to stay tuned for season six of Let's Talk to the Lord, a gospel radio talk show created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Keep it locked right there. Trying to do what's right, but it to admit it. I used to talk, say, but I really didn't live it. God asked for time, but I really wouldn't give it. Different strokes with different folks I was with. It's thought that I could do what I wanted. You forgive it. All about me. Never thought about your feelings. Feelings. Guess I didn't realize you had them. I wanted a genie in the bottle. Aladdin. I was just playing games. Madden. Till your love broke the chains. Hadden. Never knew a love like this before. Waited on me even when I took the detour. So I give my life as a free will offering and pledge my allegiance like I'm Uncle Sam's offspring. Yeah. I'm forever indebted because Christ paid it all. So I give him interest. I'm not like credit. Perfect. I'm not perfect. No To the gratitude changed my perception Got rid of all that that'll do No halfway, all the way in Lord, I'm ready for the fight When's the way in? I live a safe life No Satan And I try my best not to fall for temptation Used to be a time it would get me Now when the devil uses it to swing It'll miss me Also a time where the devil held me hostage Now my flesh is always on the verge of death Hospice I appreciate your love for me And pulling me back so that a dying world could see That if you love me enough to save me Then it'll do it for you too And the world can watch it, you too I'm not perfect, but I'm not where I was Cause Jesus' love put me back Back, Lazarus. Holy and blessed greetings in the name of our Lord, Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries. Thank you for tuning in for season six 
of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, our guest for this episode in Season 6 of Let's Talk to the Lord is preacher, producer, songwriter, rapper, and singer, Minister Timothy Balknight, a.k.a. Tubi. Kingdom 2B is the next up-and-coming gospel hip-hop artist. 2B is a multidimensional musician, songwriter, producer, rapper, and singer who is not only gifted but is well-passionate about using his God-given gifts, talents, and abilities for the upbuilding of the kingdom. 2B, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Thank you, Apostle Ross, for having me. I do already feel welcome, and I'm excited about this. Amen. And before we begin our discussion, please share with the kingdom your repentance experience when you began your journey with our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. So I grew up in the church. I'm I'm, I'm nothing but a church boy, and I... Uh, had, you know, a lot of the experiences that everybody else had in the church, and I thank God for that. But because of that, then it allowed me to feel like that I had a whole lot of time to run. I felt like I was young and I had things that I wanted to do, and so I got caught up in uh, the world of the of the devil. But one day in 2003, the Lord saved me, and he filled me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, and I have been running for my life ever since. And so I'm grateful to God for everything that he's done. Amen. Tubi, please announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Amen. So the topic that we're going to be talking about today is, should we, the church, be silent about Pride Month so as not to offend anybody. And I believe that that is actually a very good and pertinent topic to talk about just because we live in a day and age now where everything seems to be offensive to everyone. So when we go to the Scripture, when we go to the Word of God, when we look in Leviticus, the 18th chapter and the 22nd verse, we'll find that it reads, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. So we live, again, we live in a time frame where everything is offensive to everybody. Anything you do nowadays is offensive. Anything you say, most of everything that you say, people are finding and taking offense to it. There were things that you used to, you know, we could say back in the day that was nothing but a joke or was nothing but happenstance. But now when you listen to people, you listen to people talk, then it's offensive. Everything seems to be coming at people. You can't even tell people the truth anymore because it's offensive. That is not taking people's uh, opinions or not taking people's feelings into consideration. So we live in a strange day and age now where it's very hard to even speak the Bible. They're coming at us for being Christians. They're coming at us for speaking and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the word, as we just read, God is letting us know verbatim that we cannot lay with the same sex as we do with the opposite sex. I heard preachers say back in the day that God created Adam and Eve. He didn't create Adam and Steve. So we have to look at that as being God's word. It's what he said. It's not about what we say. It's not about what we feel. It's not about us being offensive to anybody. It's about God's word. God says it. He is the creator. He is the one who created each and every person who is listening to me now. He is the one who orchestrates and dictates each of our walks. And so we can't look at it from a standpoint of we're offending someone to tell the truth. I remember back in the day, 
I'm from the Church of God in Christ. And back in the day, we had a statement at one of our conventions where they said, I won't be silent anymore. And that is a statement that should ring true now, except for the fact that there are so many people who are being silent because they don't want to offend anybody. So they said, I don't agree with the lifestyle. I don't agree with the Pride Month. I don't agree that you take God's rainbow. First of all, God's rainbow was not a sign for gay pride. God's rainbow was a sign and a covenant to his people that he would never flood the earth again. And so, therefore, we have to look at it for what it really is, not for what the devil has tried to make it be. The devil is always going to come through, and he's always going to try to come with something and snatch something away from God. So God gave the rainbow. Now the devil has snatched it, and he's put it there and said, no, that means gay pride. So therefore, more people identify with the rainbow as gay pride than they do God's promise. And there, there is not even with those people. It's more so with the church. Because we as the church have to stand up and we cannot be silent. We cannot sit down. We cannot be comfortable letting things happen. We have to cry loud and spare not as the word declares. We have to lift up our voice like a trumpet in Zion. Because if, if what God is saying is good enough for us, then it ought to be good enough for other people as well. And how are we going to let our light so shine that men may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven yes. if we're not willing to stand up for what God said? We have to be willing to stand up and stand out for what God said. We have to be willing to be the peculiar people that God said that we are in First Peter 2 and 9. He called us a peculiar people, a holy nation, yes, Lord. a chosen generation, a royal priesthood is what he called us so that we could stand out, and that's what we're supposed to do. So it's really not about offending anyone. And if, what, and if I'm saying and telling you the truth according to what God said and you're offended by that, then I'm going to pray for you that God would help you because the problem is not with me. The problem is with the demons that may be in you. So yeah. I pray even now that we would look at it from the standpoint of what it really is. No, we're not trying to offend anybody by Pride Month, but we should be the Christian, we the God follower, we should be offended by Pride Month. We should be offended that the world is taking God's promise and trying to pervert it. We should be offended yeah. that they are trying to promote this to our children. It's not necessarily, first of all, it's not even about the, 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 the acts that happen in the bedroom between a man or a woman and a man or a man and a woman or a woman. We shouldn't be promoting that to children anyway. What yeah. you do is what you do, and that doesn't need to be known for everybody. But we shouldn't be promoting what God said is wrong, and we should be those who don't have a problem standing up and standing out for what God said is wrong. Because it wasn't Minister Balk Knight, it wasn't Apostle Ross that said it was wrong, it was God who said it was wrong. And yeah. he knows all. He's the omniscient God. He's the one who knows everything. He knows the past, present, and the future and can see them all at the same time. So So he knew that this was going to happen. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for things like this. And Lot's wife even got destroyed and turned into a pillar of salt because she was looking back at the deeds that came from Sodom and Gomorrah, which we know was impure, immoral things. So we have to be those who cannot be those who are silent. We have to be those, as the Bible said, that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When you have those things, then you're not afraid of the devil. You're not afraid of what the enemy is saying. You're not afraid of the backlash that comes for standing up. But I know and I declare and I decree even on this line that I'm going to be somebody who stands up for righteousness. I'm going to be somebody who stands up for God's word. And I do not have any fear of retaliation from the devil. I don't have any fear for how he's going to come at me because we have to tell the people. We have to be the light. Some people will never walk into a church. Some people will never, ever, ever step foot into a prayer service. But the one thing that they will see is our light. 
The one thing that they will see is what we are doing and what we are saying. And we have to be those that not only read the word, but live the word. We have to be those that not only teach the word and not only preach the word, but we are an examples of the word. And so if God said that it was an abomination, then we have to be those that say it was an abomination as well. I'm not saying that we have to bash people. I'm not saying that we have to shun people. I'm not saying that. We're also supposed to love everyone so we yeah. can love people. But we got to love people enough to tell them the truth. We got to love people enough to tell them what God's word said and then believe that if we do that, that even everything that's holding them, holding them, the struggles that they may have, the challenges that they may have, that God is able to free them. God is able to deliver them. God is able to change. And so, no, we cannot stand and say that we're, we're going to stand with those who agree with Pride Month just because we don't want to offend them, but we have to stand firm on the solid rock and know that he'll have our back no matter what we do, if we do it in him. God bless. At this time, I'm going to turn it back into your hands, Apostle. Thank you for my time. Amen, amen, and in agreement, I say amen again. Kingdom, our topic of discussion for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is should we, the church, stay silent about Pride Month so not to offend anyone? To be my brother, this is a nuclear bomb and weapon formed by Satan. Because he right. has such a hatred for God and God's creation to the point that he wants to pervert what God created. He wants to pervert relationship with God and Christ from being pure and holy because he was cast out and flung out of the heavens. Satan wants to destroy God's framework for the family in any way and every way he can, and not just only by using this lifestyle. So let's begin Amen. with offend. The meaning of offend, offend is to cause to feel upset, annoyed, or resentful. Offend can also mean to commit an illegal act, do wrong, sin, or go astray as well. So that offense can be on each side. Kingdom, we are dealing with a two-edged sword with this topic. What is Pride Month? The purpose of Pride Month is to recognize the impact LGBT people have had in the world. Pride Month means standing with LGBT family, friends, and allies, and its positive defiance is to anyone who challenges their right to live love, and succeed just as they are and without apology. Kingdom, we have to understand that this lifestyle has been in existence since Egypt and in our biblical history. This is nothing new. In Exodus 32, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, they gathered together to Aaron and said, Make us gods to go before us. The people here are a part of the mixed multitude and learned this behavior before leaving Egypt and had yet to be taught and understand the origin of this lifestyle. It's like a person who says they were born this way. In theory, you really wasn't, but since the course of sin through Adam, you feel like you do because the enemy created this attack against God's creation, which is the apple of God's eye. But you are loved by God. Please understand, God is holy and pure. He is so holy and pure that all of us literally could not be in his presence without God creating a zone for us or we die. 
because of his holiness and his pureness, not to offend people in LGBT lifestyle. God loves you and sent Jesus and the Holy Spirit to rebirth anyone who wants to change. I am not trying to offend anyone, but God created male and female with the design to reproduce, and that's it. God ordained marriage between a man and a woman. Anything less is sin because it is right. an offense to God. God is not picking on LGBT. The same standard applies with people who cohabitate without being married or those who like to indulge in their favorite lusts and fetishes. 1 John 5 Amen. and 17 declares, all unrighteousness is sin. Jesus gave his life, shed his blood for everyone, including LGBT. LGBT is no different than any other sin in this world. However, there is a process involved with every deliverance. But God is the power to change anyone our job as the kingdom and the church is to show love and teach without being caught up or being a participant in the same behavior or lifestyle or abuse anyone in that lifestyle, which is the place where many in the religious community can fail in the community because we can be hypocrites, but we have to be the example of what we teach by God's word and power. Romans 1 and 16 declares, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Kingdom, our purpose is to be fruitful light and seasoning for our culture. But we allow the Holy Spirit to release healing, conviction, repentance, and draw who God wants to draw to God. We are just vessels yielded for God's use. Kingdom, the law allows Pride Month to exist like many other festivals, etc. So it is not the job of the church to abuse, harass, attack, bully, call names to anyone for any reason. However, God has laws and God's way of doing things. So it is impossible to join a lifestyle that offends God into the worship of God. We must do it God's way according to the holy and perfect will of God. God will not allow God's kingdom to serve two masters, and that's of any kind, whether that be money or any kind. Kingdom, whether the church is offended or not, the court has approved same-sex marriage. The laws allows for the unions to be legal, but not God. Malachi 3 and 6 declares, I am the Lord. I change not. What God is saying is to be very careful not to repeat the sin of Sodom and become arrogant, rebellious, and extort or coerce, trying to force on society certain practices such as the church being sued over performing same-sex marriages, or the employment of staff of any lifestyle that displeases God into the church. For those who run a business in society, outside the church, ministry, and private education, you have to follow a different framework of the law. But those who receive government money being threatened, to be cut off from government grants and loans, and doctrinizations trying to force into the school system, and teachers who cannot use the common phrase of little girls and little boys and where the children should go to the bathroom and teaching in the elementary schools about this lifestyle, women being called a birthing person instead of a female or a woman, this should be kept out of elementary school and a different Amen. platform place needs to be created for those who are struggling with their identity and those who do not want to go to church or God for deliverance 
and answers. The Lord is saying that this is becoming a rebellion against God manipulated by Satan. It's one thing to mistreat individuals, but it's another one to force a lifestyle on someone, the court and the law and the government who opens this door is the reason for this problem. Again, no one should be abused, mistreated, discriminated against based upon race or ethnicity, sex, which comes, covers the major part of this issue. But when it comes to different lifestyles, that cannot be forced on anyone. Revelation 22 and 17 declares, and whosoever will let him drink of the water freely. We can't have it both ways, but as the church, the job is to teach and be the loving examples. If some are annoyed, we still must teach God's word. We cannot whitewash God's word. Kingdom, I don't have a heaven or a hell to put anyone in. God makes that sovereign decision. Tubi, please give us final words on our discussion. Should the church stay silent about punishment to not to offend anyone when it comes to Pride Month? I'm absolutely grateful for the subject and the subject matter because of, as you said, the pertinent times that we live in. The subject is pertinent to what we are going through and is seeing, especially in America. I'm reminded of the statement there was a statement that they used to have that uh, they said they were in the closet and that used to be the case now the statement is more so that they're uh, they've come out of the closet however the church on a large part has gone into the closet in terms of what we're saying uh and our beliefs and what god said so i pray that what we would do is that we would be offended, not by the actions of the LGBTQ community or anybody associated, but by the fact that it's the devil going against our God. And so when you have that, and when you have, when you look at it for what it really is, which is the devil, which is going against our God and the God in us, then there should be something that is something about us that is offended and offended enough to not talk about, not bash, not come after, but pray. Prayer is the key. We have to pray for people because prayer is the thing that changes not only people but things. And if we really, really get down to prayer and we really get down to business in prayer, then we will see a change. So, again, I am grateful for the opportunity to speak on the subject matter, and I pray that someone has been blessed and enriched by what has been said today. Amen. Tubi, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. So my name is, my artist name is Tubi, that's T-U-U space B period. You can find me on all social media pages by that mantra, Tubi. So when you look there, you can go on Facebook. I have a page there, Tubi. On Twitter, uh, it is to be the artist, to be the artist. So T-U-U-B and then the artist, all one word, at Twitter. And on Instagram, it's at to be the artist, all one word. Please, ma'am, please, sir, go there and check me out. I'm updating it on a regular basis. Amen. And how may the kingdom support your ministry and purchase your music? So I would love it if any of you all listening would go to any social media streaming platform or media outlet. All my music is on Apple. It's on iTunes. It's on Tidal. It's on Spotify. I'm everywhere that you can buy music. My music is there. You just go and look for 2B. Once again, 2-T-U-U space capital B period. Once you type that in, then my catalog should come up. I pray that my music will bless you. Amen. And please tell the kingdom about your music being featured during this podcast, Love Pulls Me Back, and What He's Done For Me. 
So I'm grateful. Love Pulls Me Back is, believe it or not, actually the first song that I ever wrote. Um, it just it came out later, but it was the first song that I ever wrote. It's basically talking about how each time that I tried to get away from God and I tried to run in the opposite direction, his love pulled me back to him. So I pray that you will listen to that and that it will bless you. It's featuring uh, one of my good friends, Rob Rivera. Um, so definitely go and check that out and let it bless you. And then my latest single is entitled What He's Done For Me, featuring Preacher Man and my father, T.J. Balknight of the Southern Gospel Singers. And that is self-explanatory, like the old testimony song. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. So if you listen there, there's actually two different uh, types of music. So if you go and you listen to what he's done for me, I pray that that song will bless you on there. Listen to my testimony and tell me what you think. Hey, man, a kingdom, the music of to be is in rotation on Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot international. Kingdom Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You can download episodes from speaker.com under Let's Talk to the Lord. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time at KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and SensationalSoundsRadio.net. Every Saturday we are there at 11 a.m. Central Time. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. Please download our app on your app play store for your cell phones under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. You can now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk Radio International and Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International is your 24-hour station for talk radio, interviews, news, and Christian music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease, with author Kimberly V. Porter. My music is available on Amazon and all digital stores. Lord, give me another chance, featuring Sean Skills and Tamara Lloyd. And remember now, thy creator under the name of Minister John E. Ross. Kingdom, until next time, may God bless you. And may God keep you every day living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah.
what to do. 